Now, we, when I began this journey as RNC chairwoman four years ago, I knew, I knew, and many of you told me, I had big shoes to fill. I also knew I wanted to put my own stamp on the party and take on big projects that would set us up for success in 2020 and beyond. It goes without saying that when all of us met this time last year, none of us could have imagined everything the coming year would throw at us. From planning our nominating convention, not once, not twice, but three times, to the other countless challenges we faced this past year, 2020 put us all to the test. And of course, the greatest challenge of all has been the loss of friends and family members to this horrific virus. Yet through it all, through it all, each of you have never wavered in the face of adversity. All of you stepped up to the plate and carried out our mission with conviction. And because you did, we accomplished so many of the things we set out to do. We raised the most money ever in the history of our party. We coalesced around one platform to drive small dollar donations by launching WinRed. Even in its infancy, WinRed has proven successful beyond our wildest dreams. We've raised more than two billion in just a year and a half uh, with WinRed, something it took Democrats a full 14 years to do with their small dollar donation platform. We built the biggest, largest political infrastructure ever, talking to more voters, 182 million of them, than any other campaign in history. And our data-driven ground game turned out millions more Republicans than ever, and it set the standard by which future campaigns will be judged. One of the things I am most proud of is how we stepped up to engage minority communities and expand our party this election cycle. You cannot win votes if you do not ask for them. And this cycle, we made an unprecedented effort to meet voters where they are and invest in their communities. We opened community centers dedicated to engaging black, Latino, and Hispanic Americans and amplifying Republicans' winning message. The nearly 10,000 events our Trump Victory Strategic Initiatives team held this cycle included events aimed at engaging Asian Pacific Americans, black Americans, and Hispanic Americans. We held our TVLIs in 14 14 different languages, including Vietnamese, Hindi, Haitian, Creole, Hmong, and Greek, and Portuguese, just to name a few. We dovetailed our community events with an aggressive media strategy that included 2,000 bookings in black media outlets and more than 1,300 interviews for RNC officials and surrogates on Hispanic TV and radio stations across the country. And our message resonated. And the years-long investment we made was a big part of the reason President Trump earned the highest share of minority votes for a Republican in 60 years. Over a quarter of his support in this election came from non-white voters. He significantly broadened his base among black voters, winning close to 20% of black men and more than doubling his support with black women. We saw similar trends with Hispanic voters and Asian Americans, and there is no doubt that he has redrawn the political map for our party and proved that we can compete and win in non-traditionally Republican communities. Building on our minority engagement efforts, we also held a different kind of convention last summer that showcased a more diverse, representative Repl Republican party. Americans saw we are a big tent party, a party the president helped expand and one that now looks more like the rest of America. While we are disappointed about the races that we lost, and I know we're disappointed, we also saw important wins for Republicans across the country. Contrary to what every political pundit in the Beltway bubble was predicting and not so secretly hoping for, no blue wave materialized on Election Day. As we learn, every election, candidates matter. And in November, Americans across uh, the country elected Republicans with compelling life stories to the House of Representatives. Two of those are young Kim and Michelle Steele. We all know Michelle Steele because she's married to our National Committee man from California, Sean Steele. They were both... <laughs> both women were born abroad, and they knew each other while raising their kids here in America. And they saw firsthand how Democrat policies of high taxes combined with crippling government regulations were crushing small businesses and the American dream in their Southern California communities. They realized they couldn't afford to sit on the sidelines. And this week, this week, they became the first two Korean American women to be seated in the United States Congress.
For Americans who are sick and tired of hearing about AOC and the rest of the socialist squad, we have great news. That's because we now have our own squad, the Freedom Squad, made up of people who know firsthand the perils of socialism in practice. People like Nicole Maliotakis, Carlos Jimenez, Maria Salazar, and Victoria Sparks, who will be on the front lines defending freedom and standing up to Speaker Pelosi's extreme agenda every single day. It's It's also fitting and a point of pride for me that in the year we celebrated the 100th anniversary of women gaining the right to vote, a cause championed by Republicans, our country voted to send a record number of women to Congress. These reasons, these reasons and the speakers we had last night and the things we are seeing here give me every cause to be confident and optimistic about the future of our party as we begin this new year. While we incur are encouraged by our track record in competitive House and other down-ballot races, we are disappointed with the results as elsewhere. And I've said a few times this week, and I know this probably isn't proper English, but I am pissed. I am pissed about losing critical elections. I'm so mad. And it's okay, because we're going to take that into 2022. And we have a lot of hard work to do to take back the Senate and the House in 2022. But I am mad, and I am not going to let socialism rule in this country. And I'm going to work with every single one of you to make sure we squash it, we take back the House, and we take back the Senate in 2022. We are not. We are not going to cede our country to the far left who want to turn towards socialism, institute the Green New Deal, and remake America as we know it, and take away my right to call myself a mother, a wife, a sister, a woman. Give me a break. So Democrats, get ready. Buckle your seatbelts because we are coming. And before I end, I want to say, and I want to say this sincerely from the bottom of my heart, how proud I am to serve in this role as RNC chairman of the Republican Party because, yes, we are the Republican Party at this pivotal point in our nation's history. RNC chairs have included governors, speakers of the House, senators, and even a future president. And I will always be forever grateful to President Trump and all of you for believing in me and giving me this opportunity of a lifetime. I love the RNC, and I love the Republican Party and what we stand for. And I know that the best is yet to come for us. We are the steady ship in the storm, and we are there for our candidates when they need them. And it is now up to us to keep that ship on course and together build a stronger institution than ever. I love the opportunity to work with each and every one of you. You are my friends. You are my family. I appreciate your constructive cr criticism. I appreciate your efforts, the volunteerism, the things that you're doing to strive to make our nation better. People who take on the sacrifices of being an RNC member, you do it joyfully because you believe in your heart that the causes and values we're fighting for are the right ones. Most of all, I love the RNC because it gives me an opportunity in some small way back, small way to give back to the country we all love. And because this land of liberty we are likely to call home is still worth fighting for, let us not grow weary in doing good as scripture, scripture teaches, for in due time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Thank you again for being willing to step up and serve as RNC members. May God bless each and every one of you. May God bless your families. And may God bless the greatest nation on earth, the United States of America. Thank you.